Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 9th. First up, this one comes from, well actually I've had a whole bunch of people send this one in, so I'm just going to give credit so I don't have to name off just a huge list of names. This was first uh, sent in by Tim M., my friend from California, but sent by a lot of other people besides. This is from Wired Magazine, the world's first self-driving semi-truck hits the road. This is just a test vehicle right now. This is from the uh, Audi company, or no, the Daimler. Um, it's the Daimler company, the Daimler 18-wheeler, sold around the world. And this is the model that is actually put out in America as a Freightliner. It's called a Freightliner Ins Inspiration. They call it a teched-up version of the Daimler 18-wheel sold around the world. And according to Daimler, which owns Mercedes-Benz, it will make long-haul road transportation safer, cheaper, and better for the planet. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to test it on long, straight runs at first. And so that's pretty much all of the built-in autonomy they're going to give it. This thing is not going to be driving around in cities or anything like that. And as a matter of fact, other than this test model, it's probably not going to be driving around uh, much at all. Uh, at least for the next few years or so until they get it fully tested. They want to get about a million miles uh, under their belts with this thing before they actually put it out on the roads. Uh, or at least they say here it says, but the automaker needs a few million more test miles on the books in a wide variety of locales and conditions before it's ready to offer even very limited autonomous compatibility to any customers. Uh, they're talking about the fact that if it develops and goes all as planned, they may even in the future be able to have these things go completely autonomous for long stretches on like expressways and uh, tollways and stuff like that, and then uh, have it go as uh, caravans with a bunch of trucks staggered along with each other, and then what it would do at the end is pull off the major expressway into a waiting area or like a holding area, and then have a regular human driver pick them up and then do the local deliveries and the backups into docks and things like like that so uh, there could be some savings in that and just uh, savings in the gas mileage too by having them caravanning with the first truck breaking the um, breaking into the wind so that the other trucks just like uh, geese flying in formation will have uh, less wind resistance to have to overcome but yeah something they're developing and working on towards the future and another one, this comes from my friend Navy Thomas Aiton. This is from Fox News. High-tech military goggles combine night vision and thermal imaging. Up until now, I guess soldiers have had to carry two pieces of equipment with them. They've had to use the night vision, and then when they want to do targeting, they have to switch to another type of system. So this is just combining them together, and I guess they're going to be wirelessly locked to the weapon systems too, besides to where if you do get a, if you spot something with your night vision and then turn on the thermal, it will actually direct it to the targeting device by wireless means and then uh, be able to uh, take out the enemy or at least make a determination of what it is that, you know, what kind of target you're going to engage or something like that. I'll just read a paragraph here. The company says that the technology will help military personnel acquire targets and engage enemy combatants faster and also reduces the need for aiming lasers, enabling soldiers to remain hidden longer. Uh, the ability to conduct surveillance and any light any light or weather condition increases mission safety and effectiveness, said Terry Crimmins, BAE Systems Vice President. BAE Systems is who's designing this, and they're hoping to get this in the hands of the military sometime in 2016 or 2017 at the very latest. This next one is from the website Sina. They've developed all kinds of action cameras, and they're probably the one market besides GoPro that really seems focused on the moto vlogging community more than a, your average camera maker that wants action cameras for a variety of sports uses. And so this new one is called the Sina 10C. It says coming soon on the thing here, so I can't get you a price on it or anything, but if you want to take a look at it here, it's got like just gobs and gobs of features. I mean, it's got your Bluetooth, it's got your camera function, it's got intercom function, uh, can communicate with a GPS besides. I don't think it has built-in GPS. I think the way they're talking about it using Bluetooth 4.0 technology, it will be able to communicate with those uh, types of GPS devices that are set up to use Bluetooth. Uh, video mode 1080p 30 frames per second or 720p 30 or 60 frames per second four-way intercom voice prompts it gives you voice prompts for different features um, you can also play your tunes like most of the type of setups like this too and it's got an FM tuner built on so and I'm probably not even getting into every single ones of the few of the uh, features that it has supports up to a 32 gigabyte 
memory card, um, which is not included. And all I can say is if they keep the price well within what seems to be the competitive price is either $399 or $499 for the latest and greatest uh, camera, action camera, combined device, whatever, might stand a pretty good chance. So if you get a chance, check this out. And another gadget that I've talked about several times uh, on the TDD report is the Oculus Rift. And up until now, um, some of you know my previous reports I said about Oculus Rift starting out as a, uh, uh, I forget what it was, a Kickstarter project maybe or an Indiegogo, I forget which type of project it was, but uh, after it really caught on famously, then Facebook um, bought them out for $2 billion and they've just been selling developers kits. Well, they claim now, and they don't have a price either, but they claim that they're actually going to be getting ready to release this to the general public. And uh, I'll just read you the last part of the article. Our Oculus VR wasn't the only company exploring virtual reality, and they talk about Sony developing the Morpheus system and uh, some other companies developing their own particular systems. But it says Oculus VR promises more information in its blog post saying it will have additional details and show off its new hardware at the E3 Gaming Convention, which takes place in Los Angeles June 16th to 18th. So we should get some information and maybe some kind of a price point. And they're claiming they're going to um, have some stuff with it ready to go, so there will actually be some software with it. Because what good is uh, your 3D hardware devices if there is not a lot of software out there to go with it to give you the... Uh, 3D effect you're looking at. So maybe the developers have actually been doing good with the developers kits. And last up, this is something I've talked about in the past two different technologies to be able to save earthquake victims and especially uh, to be able to detect victims under rubble that are still breathing. You can detect either their breathing or their heart rate. Heart rate. So uh, NASA technology saved four lives in Nepal earthquake by detecting their heartbeats. And this was from, uh, I think about 10 feet away. They claim it can go even farther than that, but under practical purposes, they've been doing it uh, from about 10 to about 10 feet of concrete and rubble. NASA's new radar technology was able to detect the heartbeats of men trapped under 10 feet of rubble due to the devastating 7.8 magnitude Nepalese earthquake. NASA deployed two prototypes of the new search and rescue technology called Finder, finding individuals for disaster and emergency response, which uses microwave radar to pinpoint faint heartbeats, allowing emergency teams to respond accordingly. So this is not anywhere um, near the limits of what it can actually do if they uh, if it can meet the claims, but definitely uh, well within the realm to be effective. And uh, yeah, I'd say saving four lives it's a uh, it's good technology. Uh, I'll read a little bit more of the rescue, which helped save four men trapped under rubble and earthquake where the death toll nears 8,000 marked the first time Finder was used in a real-world situation. Of course, no one wants disaster to occur, but tools like this are designed to help when our worst nightmares do happen. I am proud that we were able to provide the tools to help rescue these four men. So uh, in addition with that, and uh, I've also done some reports about the small robots, the uh, worm type or snake type of robots that can actually go into rubble and search out people. Yeah, it looks like in the future we're going to be able to recover a lot more people um, alive and help them out when this kind of thing happens, and we'll have the tools to do it so if you get a chance check out as usual all the links down below will be uh, able to be found down below in the description box and uh, thank you for uh, watching and thank you all those people that keep sending me in material to post that really helps me out a lot especially this week with uh, bandit nev and uh, navy thomas eight and tim and all the others all the many of you that sent me in the uh, information on the robotic uh, self-driving truck so thank you that means a lot especially when times get slow and i have a hard time finding articles myself it helps that i've got some really great viewers that help me out so take care everybody i will catch you next week